few weeks ago, I decided to completely update my home office desk setup because to be honest, it desperately needed it. I spend hours in here every day working from home, editing videos, responding to emails. So with this update, I wanted to accomplish two things. I wanted to make the setup more ergonomic and comfortable, and I wanted to create a more inspiring and just overall enjoyable space. So let's jump into it, starting with the most important piece of any desk setup, and that's going to be the desk. This is the FlexiSpot E7 Pro. This was an absolute must have for this setup because it gives me the option to alternate between sitting and standing throughout the day. Long term, this is a lot easier on my back and just my posture in general. Plus, when you're sitting at a desk seven to eight hours a day, it's nice to have the option to get up and get the blood flowing. Now, there's plenty of standing desks out there, but there's a few reasons I like the E7 Pro. Number one, the dual motor design. The height adjustment is not only fast, it's also incredibly smooth. And no matter the height that you choose, this thing is very stable. Number two, the weight capacity. It can support up to 440 pounds, which is nearly 100 pounds more than some of the other options out there. So it can easily hold all of your precious hardware as well as your accessories. There's also a USB port located on the controller, which I love because it comes in handy as an additional power source. And then maybe my favorite feature of all is the child lock. I've got a two year old daughter that loves getting into things. So needless to say, the child lock is getting plenty of use. And then to top things off, FlexiSpot stands behind their products with a 15 year warranty and they've got options to fit just about any setup and any budget. Now, after putting the desk together, the next thing on my list was choosing a power source. Instead of a regular power strip, I went with the Nexode 65 watt 7-in-1 charging station from Ugreen. This is a very powerful charging solution in a minimal compact design. As you can see, it's about the size of a Rubik's Cube. It comes with a heavy duty six foot power cord and the 7-in-1 layout makes it compatible with just about any device. It's got three AC outlets, two USB-A ports, and two Type-C ports. So I'm able to power my desk, my monitor, as well as my speakers. And then as far as my other devices, like my laptop and my phone, I can use a high-speed charging cable and get speeds up to 65 watts using one of the Type-C ports. The USB-A ports, on the other hand, max out at 18 watts. And to top things off, it features over-voltage, over-current, and short circuit protection to keep your devices safe. Now let's move over to one of my favorite desk accessories, which is this mechanical mouse mover. If you're a work from home professional, chances are you've either used or heard of these devices. If we're being honest, working from the comfort of your own home means you get to do a lot more than just work. You might take breaks throughout the day to tidy up the house, throw in a load of laundry, cook a meal or two, but you don't want your supervisor or your coworkers to see that you're always away from your computer. So with this, all you have to do is set your mouse down and it physically moves your cursor so that your computer stays active even when you're away from your desk. And the beautiful thing is it's completely untraceable. It uses USB for power, so you can plug it into your computer, but if you're a little skeptical and you wanna be extra cautious, you could also plug it into a wall outlet. Now on the front, you have your controls as well as an LED display, and you can actually make interval adjustments as far as how frequently it moves your cursor. And as you can see, the device itself is a pretty good size, so it can accommodate pretty much any mouse, large or small. Now when I'm not using it, it's compact enough that I can tuck it away under this hardwood desk riser. And speaking of this thing, I'm super happy with my purchase. This is from a company called Nordic by Design that I found on Amazon. It's reasonably priced and the quality is excellent. It's a nice solid piece of wood and it matches the overall aesthetic of my desk. It gives me a place to store some of my hardware and accessories like my laptop and my audio interface. And best of all, it's super easy to assemble. I was expecting to pull out my drill, maybe a couple of screws, but the feet actually hand screw directly into the wood so in a matter of about two minutes, I had this thing set up and ready to go. 
and if I choose to add any accessories to my setup, I've got space available there on the top. Now, obviously that helps with storage on the desk. As far as storage under the desk, I went with two of these black five drawer cabinets that I found on Amazon. For the price, they're decent. If you're looking to make a long-term investment, something you're gonna keep for 10 plus years, I probably wouldn't recommend these, but for intermediate use here and there, they'll get the job done. Now, I did end up swapping out the wheels because the ones that came with it didn't really roll too well. So that might be something you want to consider if you decide to pick one of these up. Moving things back to the top of the desk, let's talk about my monitor. So I went with one of the desk mounts from FlexiSpot, which was incredibly easy to set up along with the E7 Pro. And the monitor itself is not really anything special. It's a 34 inch ultra wide monitor from Samsung that I've had for quite a while. There's nothing special about the colors, the resolution or the refresh rate. I just like it because of the amount of real estate that it offers, especially when it comes to editing videos. I love the fact that you can see your entire timeline and easily make adjustments. It was also super affordable, but unfortunately, it doesn't look like Samsung makes these anymore. Next up, let's talk speakers. These are the Edifier MR4 Studio Monitors. If you follow the channel, you know I'm familiar with Edifier products. I've always had a good experience with their headphones and earbuds, so I felt pretty comfortable picking these up, especially when I saw the price. They're very affordable, and after using them for the past two weeks or so, I'll definitely say that they're worth the money. Also, I love the white color option. They do come in black, but I feel like the white gives some contrast to the overall dark and moody theme of the setup. And best of all, they sound great. They give you plenty of options as far as connecting your devices, and you even have controls for the bass and the treble so that you can really tailor the sound. I'm definitely happy with the purchase, and for a basic setup like this, these are plenty. Now, staying on the theme of audio, let's take a look at my microphone setup. This is the Mono PM500 XLR condenser microphone. And when it comes to editing videos, having this right here on the desk allows me to add voiceovers throughout the process. I haven't used the microphone that much, so I'm still experimenting to get the best sound. I have it mounted on this desktop boom arm, which seems to be working out really well. It allows me to easily change the position of the microphone based on my needs. Moving things along, let's take a look at one of my favorite pickups for this entire setup, which is actually this keyboard. The price point is super affordable, and as you can tell, it's made to be a budget alternative to Apple's Magic Keyboard. It matches the Apple aesthetic, and for the most part, it has all the same buttons, which has made it very seamless to use. We'll see how it holds up long term, but so far, I've got no real complaints. As far as my mouse, I'm using the Logitech MX Vertical, by far one of the most comfortable I've ever used, thanks to its vertical orientation. And the fact that it has customizable buttons makes it a great addition to any workflow. And I have the keyboard as well as the mouse resting on this felt desk pad. It's a nice accent piece that really complements the overall theme of the setup. So now let's switch gears and move things over to lighting. The first thing I added was a basic LED light strip on the back of the desk to give it that orange glow effect. From there, I went with the Govi hexagon light panels to put on the wall, and the process of putting these up is actually really cool. Once you download the app, you can choose a configuration from their list of options, or it'll walk you through customizing your own. Once you make a decision, it shows you the exact order to install the panels, and quick word to the wise, make sure you follow the layout inside the app to a T, Otherwise, you're going to run into problems. And trust me, I know firsthand, taking these down and putting them back up does not work very well. So you want to make sure you get it right the first time around. Another piece of advice is to paint the power cord the same color as your wall, because that helps it stand out a whole lot less. Once the lights are up, you pretty much have endless options as far as the colors and scenes that you can choose from. You guys have probably seen these around or at least something similar, and I gotta admit, they are a nice accent piece. Now, when I started planning this setup, I knew I wanted to use it as a secondary recording space for videos here on the channel. 
so I wanted to make sure there was adequate lighting in the room itself. The ceiling light just wasn't going to cut it. So I went with a pair of Amaran 200Ds, matched up with a pair of Aperture Light Dome SEs, and I placed one in each corner of the room. The problem you run into when you start adding lights and softboxes to any setup is that light stands take up a lot of space. So what I used are these newer wall mounted boom arms. These things are absolute game changers. For one, they don't take up any floor space. They're heavy duty and they're adjustable from left to right as well as up and down. So once they're mounted to the wall, you still have a lot of flexibility as far as positioning. And the thing I like about the Amaran 200D lights is you can control them with the Citus app on your phone and they get extremely bright. In fact, I don't think I've ever adjusted them past 10%. So in a nutshell, that's my new desk setup. I will have the links to everything mentioned in this video down in the description if you're interested. And I'm sure I'll be making some slight adjustments to the setup over time. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe for more content like this. Aside from that, I appreciate you guys for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next one.